I think we have enough of a trend now to where I could confidently say that Marvel has lost the magic. Oof. Yeah. I think what they happened? I think they have cooked the golden goose. Uh I so don't, they were just carried by like the main I don't the, big, the bangers. Or? I don't I don't think that's the case. We've we've certainly like debated it here. Well, not debated yeah. it, but we've 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 talked about we talked it here. About it. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. And I don't think it's a lack of effort either, like a lot of people are saying. Kevin Feige doesn't strike he I mean, I don't know the guy, but anytime you hear him talk, he seems very passionate about the characters and these stories that he's telling. And and that's clear because, you know, you wouldn't get this far in this type of massive franchise without a level of care to it. I think they maybe got a little too comfortable and maybe not even by his own doing. It probably has nothing to do with him. It's probably studio shit. And it's just quantity over quality at this point. Like, mm -hmm. there's just so much stuff that they're doing. And it's just, it's got to be impossible to quality control everything. You're an interesting man, Scott Lang. You're an Avenger. You have a daughter. But you've lost a lot of time, like me. We can help each other with that. And this movie was, yeah. this movie was like, this is one of the worst Marvel movies I think I've seen, like ever. What? Um, really? We came away with different takes then. Yeah, did not like it at all. It felt like it was written by a fifth grader. Uh, there was, Damn. there was like no character development. There was no, barely any character. The movie is, it's supposed to be Scott Lang's character and he was barely even like a fucking thing Close. in it. He was just wow. there. Agree to disagree. I mean, oh, okay. it was about, it was more about his daughter and him just trying to protect her the entire movie. But that's not a character arc. That's just, that's just <laughs> doing things like this movie I, was I mean, that's Scott Lane throughout Ant-Man through all the movies. I, I get it. But in each movie, he has a character arc in the first one. He's a flawed hero who like is trying to do things to it, it, in in service the of first his one's daughter. great. Yeah, the, the first one's one, great. The second one's not good think, either. I actually think that this one's better than the second one. No, I, I mean, up until this point, it was like Thor The Dark World, Ant-Man 2, uh, Eternals, maybe, and like, I can't even think of a couple of others that were like rare misses for Marvel. Uh, this one is by far, I think, the one that I have not enjoyed. But I'm the also most. a Kang Damn. Kang fan, so I enjoyed. The I can't, Kang, Kang wasn't even really good in it either, and it's basically his movie. That's that's really what took me by surprise. This right. movie, this movie, Modok was a letdown for me. Like I thought, Modok that was cheese. What they did written by a child. One. Like everything is a like they sacrifice story and character for jokes now. At at this point, in every mm -hmm. movie, like Modok is a cool villain. He was literally comic relief in this movie. And there were some but, moments, some things I mean, he said were funny, and I laughed. Yeah. But, like, they were just cheesy fucking throwaway lines that it's like, you know, that one thing he said at the end there. I mean, this will be the only spoiler I say. Yeah. Where he's, mm -hmm. he's like, at least I died in Avengers. I'm just like, what? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's kind of funny, but <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. I, the, uh, Modok, like, he's not like a main villain, so it feels like, like, um, Marvel sometimes, or at least Feige in the MCU, They'll take liberties with these type of villains to put them in one movie and then kill them off and write them off because it's fan service to just have them in there. And that's what it felt like. That's why I was kind of a little upset with Mo. Mm. I actually yeah. feel like if I had to if I had to guess, again, this is just purely speculative. I have no clue what goes on in, in, in this business, but I bet you with the how big this shit is now, I bet you Feige has less of a creative input on a lot of these projects than he used to have and that's where the difference is coming into play because it would make sense if he's all these projects and he's got to like oversee certain things and like who's right and what hiring directors hiring actors for a time uh, maybe securing fucking like deals for fucking characters and shit like that like he's probably got a lot on his plate where he can't really just sit down and be like okay well this is like this is what i want to see and like I don't know. This this movie just served. It, it, this was just a vehicle to introduce Kang. You also got a lot of Janet's backstory because you didn't really get that in the second one. Maybe you didn't care to. Yeah, but don't care. Like, what? Who cares? Like, she was in the quantum realm. Okay, we get it. But like, even what they right. showed with her it was just like, 
it it just wasn't it was all shown through like these weird flashbacks and like it was most of the dialogue is really what took me out. The dialogue in this movie was fucking terrible. There are beings down here, intelligent beings. I always theorized it was possible, but to be here, a subatomic universe, this changes everything we know about life, evolution, our place in the galaxy. Holy That guy looks like broccoli. And like scenes where it's like, these one line back at these like one word back and forth. It's like, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Let's go. And it's like, well, <laughs> who fucking wrote this? And then I looked it up. And it's like, oh, I know who wrote it. Jeff Loveness, the guy who fucking co-wrote Rick and Morty, which is a show that I fucking hate. Uh, yeah. yeah. So now I get it. Fucking wrote a cartoon and the movie literally feels like a cartoon. <laughs> and that brings me to the other part of it that I fucking couldn't stand. I get it. That it's Marvel and it's spectacle, but they have now they yeah. they have now become the thing that everybody wrongly criticized them for being all these years, which is just uh, pure spectacle, cotton candy films without any type of emotion or character mm. arcs or story or any of that they're, stuff. They're coming, but they're becoming what Seth Rogen <laughs> said they were a yeah. couple of weeks ago. Um, now, how much do you think that is actually Kevin Feige or because mm. when the MCU started, it was, uh, it was Bob Iger and then he stepped down and Bob Chapik came in and that's when they really started like pumping out a lot of shit. Mm. And he, it could have been like Chapik saying more, more, more Possible. money, money, money. Because uh, we, as I reported in the news before, once Iger came back in, they're like, we're gonna, we're gonna slow this down a little. Well, bit. I mean, it's Let's possible, but I mean, pumping it out too much. The thing is, is that they're not gonna see a box office hit. I don't think. I mean, they might. I don't know how well this movie's doing. You could maybe look that up, but I mean, it's a Marvel movie, so they'll, it's yeah. I don't know. Opening weekend. They'll probably have a pretty crazy opening because yeah. it's a Marvel movie. So it's like, they're not going to really, but I mean, executives don't even really seem to care because you saw with WB, like they were putting out fucking complete dog shit and still turning a profit because it's like, oh, it's Superman and Batman in a movie together. Fucking everybody's <laughs> going to go see that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. That, I guess that could be the case. I could certainly see an executive being like, hey, give us all the things. But, you know, yeah. and, and it's, a, it's a really stark contrast because not too long ago, the MCU, it was just like if you look at the time between like 2014 and 20, like 18, 2019, with starting with like Winter Soldier to Infinity War, it was just which was just movies, it was right. just movies, and it was banger but they were after also good. banger after yeah. banger like, after banger. It, if you said pick your favorite movie from this phase, you'd have like, a hard you'd time, you'd have to be like, you'd have a hard time, and now. It's easily like, which we still disagree because I think Doctor Strange was the best movie of the last phase. I thought I Doctor think, Strange was just terrible. Yeah, <laughs> see, so. Terrible. The only good movie to come out of this phase was Spider-Man so far. Mm. But this is phase five now. So this is another problem. This is the beginning. This is, this is this the is first. not a good beginning. No. <laughs> And, and, you know, like, so again, from 2014 to 2019, it was just banger after banger after banger after banger. Now yeah. you go into a Marvel project, even the shows, and you're like, you're like lucky if you come out of it being like, yeah, no, it was all right. Like it was whatever. <laughs> it's okay. And that's yeah. just how the reaction has been. It's just lukewarm for every single one of these. And if you look at it, they're all the same. It's all the same reason behind it. They're just these convoluted, like oversaturated vehicles for the next thing and they never were that like the MCU started off so great and so strong because they were telling independent great stories that they also had the most lovable characters that they could pull forget from the characters because I don't think that has anything to do uh, with it's it a big, it's huge I don't agree huge. with you I don't agree with you okay. and I'm going to tell you why because while yes, Captain America is obviously more of a fan favorite than fucking I don't know. Uh, Ant-Man. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> like even you know Ms. Marvel or somebody like like mm. or She Hulk like mm. for sure. But that doesn't mean you can't make a good story with a nobody character. James Gunn Agreed. did it. James Gunn has done right. it mil several times now. In fact, on in both uh, companies. So like. 
it could be done. Ant Man is the same thing. Like he was a he was a no Ant Man. Fucking what? We're getting an Ant Man movie. Oh shit! This yeah. is great. Now I like Ant Man. He's an original Avenger, so comic book uh, fans. Know who he no, is. I understand, but he's a fucking Avenger from like the '30s. Like people, modern audiences don't know who the fuck Ant Man is, and if they hear <laughs> Ant Man, the they're gonna have a Marvin reaction. Like what the fuck? Who yeah. the fuck is Ant Man? So point being is, it doesn't matter who the character is. You could like yeah, for sure, Tony Stark is more popular than Ant Man, but you could still make a good story with. A no a no name character provided you have just effort in the writing and this movie just completely lacks effort in my opinion and they all have even fucking black panther being like a pretty good i mean it was a good movie but even still you walk out of that when you're like yeah it was all right like, it wasn't yeah. that great you know like that movie was carried by like the emotion behind it with chadwick right. and you know that continues to be the case with all these movies. There's just convoluted vehicles for the next thing. And what I started to say was, like, back in the day, when it was just banger after banger, they were all independent stories. Like, very good, like, here's Captain America the Winter Soldier. And it's, it's a very much a Captain America story. We know it's set in the overall MCU. We know we're gonna hear, like, oh, we're hearing about fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA and all this stuff, and right. it's interconnected. But yeah. it didn't it's its sole purpose wasn't to lead you to the next thing. That's why the fucking after I mean, it credit, was, but it didn't feel that way, right? No, like, it wasn't though. It was not. But the, it did by the was an uh, by the time they did the third one is the difference. Like, but the yeah, first, you have to let me finish because it, uh, I have a very specific point I'm trying to make. Yes, mm -hmm. they're connected. Yes, they're saying, hey, the next thing is going to be this. That's why the fucking post credit scenes got so popular and became a thing because it's like, hey, here's a little mm -hmm. tease for what's coming. But mm -hmm. it wasn't the sole purpose of the movie. The sole right. purpose of Ant-Man was to be like, hey, Kang's here. He's coming back. The sole <laughs> purpose of fucking Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was like, hey, here's America Chavez that nobody gives a fuck about. She's coming back. <laughs> the sole purpose of fucking, uh, what was the fucking last? I don't even, I don't even remember these movies now at this point. Uh, Black right. Panther was to be like, hey, here's Namor now. And like, well, nah, that's, oh, yeah. that's unfair to say because that movie, that, that movie's sole purpose was to honor Chadwick, but... But most of these projects now, their sole purpose is to introduce the next thing. And and then everything involved in it is just it's flat because there's some truth to that. With Absolutely. this with this movie, like every I didn't give a fuck about any of the characters. I didn't give a shit about what was happening. You None like of the it, guy who wanted holes. Yeah. Like I, I I honestly, dude, at one point I turned to my friend, I was like, dude, did you buy Star Wars tickets by accident? This was like <laughs> So this was such a Star Wars movie, so much so that there were fucking Tusken Raiders in this, like literal Tusken Raiders. I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't go to the Moss Eisley, uh, the Moss Eisley Cantina at one point. <laughs> and like talking about like lazy writing, Marvin, they're in the quantum yeah. realm, and there's these little creatures and things that clearly don't speak English. So naturally, you need a MacGuffin to be like, hey, we need to speak English so we could hear these characters say funny throwaway lines. Uh huh. And it's just like. Here's some random. You drink this guy's juice. Drink some juice, and now all of a sudden you could understand what everybody's saying and communicate <laughs> with it. And it's just such a fucking like lazy, yeah, silly thing, but lazy. And laziness, I think, is the sum of this whole movie. And it was all pure spectacle, cotton candy movie. Marvin, when I tell you there is like five minutes of non CGI in this movie, I'm not exaggerating. This wow. entire That's movie, true. the entire, and I'm, I love. When CGI, I've talked about this a million times. When CGI is done good, it's great and believable. Yeah, right. it's, it's a blend of practical and CGI. This movie was one hundred percent shot on a green screen. Like, well, and we've talked about that before too. Like, yeah, how Marvel does their CGI, and they've already got it all mapped out, and they don't give directors freedom to direct because they say you're just directing this much of it. Mm -hmm. We've got mm -hmm. everything else taken care of. The fight scenes, mm -hmm. all these scenes, it's already mapped out, it's already written. We got it. You don't worry about it. And so yeah. there's not as much freedom as there I think there used to be. But and the CGI in this movie is not good in a lot of in a lot of the time it's not that great. You're an interesting man. Scott Lane. Um, I don't know who you are, but you've made a big mistake, okay? I'm an Avenger. And I've called the other Avengers. You're an Avenger? 
Have I killed you before? <laughs> what? They all blur together after a while. Jonathan Majors is like the only good part of this movie. He was the only one doing anything worth a damn. God yeah. bless him. He 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 did what he could with what he was given. But even his dialogue, there's one where he's like, "I am Kang." It's like, dude, what? Like again, did a child write this? <laughs> it felt like watching a child play with their toys, and they say like fucking dumb shit at their kids because their <laughs> brains can't like create anything. And this is what this felt like. And it's just, I, I don't know, I was yeah. very disappointed. To be fair, that is exactly something that you would see in a comic still if you're reading the books. I get it, but I'm not reading a comic book. I'm watching a movie. I want to <laughs> I want to see movie dialogue that's good. Like, and it, because they've done it before. This this actually felt like a DC movie. This felt like one, like one of these like just shitty Zack Snyder movies where that's trying to be the MCU <laughs> but failing miserably at it. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, you have characters, like I said, that, you know, for it being his movie, Scott Lang is like barely a character in this movie. Uh, Michael Douglas is completely underutilized. He just shows up with an army of ants again, as usual. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, like aside from her little flashback, she spent the whole movie like not telling her family of scientists about something she's afraid about until like the second act of the movie for no reason. Where it was made no sense. Evangeline Lilly is like barely utilized in the movie. And Jonathan Majors is like the only standout person doing what he could with what he was given. And yeah. even that kind of fell flat because by the end of this movie, I have, I left this movie with like no fear whatsoever of Kang. He did not wow. come across to me as like a major threat. He did not, I mean, he did not, I know they're going to pose him as that, but they didn't present him that way in this. He did not come across to me as like scary or threatening or any of those things. That briefly, right. there's one fight scene between the two where he's fucking like just beating the shit out of him. And there's some reason for that though. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't know. For the most part, I just he'll uh, be a lot scarier once he's uh, he's out of the I hate bottom to, realm. I hate to do the comparison, but we have to because we're post Thanos. But like he's no fucking Thanos. <laughs> Like you, <laughs> like Thanos over the course of those years where you're just like, they're teasing him and then he just doesn't, you don't hear anything from him, but you know, he's lurking in the background and then like, boom, he shows up in a stinger. Oh, I'll do it myself. It's like, oh fuck. Like he, and, and in infinity war, the way they open infinity war where it's fucking him just like wiping out the fucking Asgardians. You're like, oh fuck. This yeah. dude does not play. I didn't get that impression from Kang. It's just like, oh, all right. He's and, just, he's, and Kang is supposed to be the next... Yeah, his name is Kang the guy. Conqueror. He fucking goes <laughs> right. around the multiverse killing and conquering and pillaging. And, like, you just don't well, feel that from him. The ability to move through time is his superpower, and he couldn't do that in the quantum realm, which is why he was, like, shackled yes. a little bit no, in no, this movie. I, no, I get so it. So once he gets out, like, he'll be a lot more, like, I get he's going to do some shit and be some shit that he wasn't in this movie. But for but for his but for for his introduction, I don't even they didn't even really like give you a good explanation of where like who he is, what he stands for, why he's doing the things he's doing. And I mean, I, they really didn't in the comics. Either, I'm sure though. that'll like, come. Just now, like just now, like I think last year they finally started like fixing Kang's history because he shows up in a villain all the time in the comics for like the last 50, 60 yeah, years. Yeah, he's been retconned several they times. They never really, they never really like. You know, delved out his character, and now they're actually doing it. So yeah, well, I don't know. Which that's, is a good read, by the way. That's my thoughts on it. Not a fan. You seem to disagree with me. Give, talk talk a little bit about uh, why no, you disagree. I, I mean, I, I uh, again, I I went in for it for Kang, um, and like I said, you know, you're talking about how uh, these are all tied together, but like Ant Man One was about Ant Man, and it really wasn't tied to anything else. Uh, Ant Man Three is really about um, his character within the MCU, like most of the other movies that got trilogies, which is very few when you think about it. Not a whole lot of characters got three movies. Uh, Thor got one, Cap got one, mm -hmm. uh, Iron Man got one, and even those, like Iron Man 3, not a good movie. I, I like mm -hmm. Iron Man 3. I think Iron Man 3 is good. <laughs> but I know I'm one of the few. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, I don't know. I, I went into it, uh, thinking, uh, excited about watching Kang and I came away with some, some highs and lows, but looking at it holistically, like between the movies that have come out again with a 
few exceptions, like Spider-Man for sure, amazing movie. Like, I'll put Black Panther in there as an exception because it was mostly good, but still not great. Like, between the movies and the TV shows, it's like, I don't know what we're doing here. Like, like Moon Knight was fucking terrible. We all agreed on that. Yeah. Like, She-Hulk was, was like, right. She-Hulk was like barely memorable. Like, yeah, that was terrible. swing and a miss. Yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I just don't know what... Like it's just I I really just think it's a, it's an issue of just too much content. It's like mm -hmm. it has to be. You can't can you can't quality control all that stuff. So it's like where is this incentive coming from? Probably the executives of like, hey, we need subscribers on Di Disney. Plus, I think Disney. Yeah. I think the Disney Plus thing. Th that's another thing with this movie too. I won't spoil it. Well, I guess I kind of have to to say what I'm going to say. One of the post credit scenes is. A lead up to Loki season two, mm -hmm. but this whole movie, for the most part, if you didn't watch Loki, you're fucking well, lost. Loki <laughs> season one was yeah, it was a lead up to this. So. I know that's what I'm saying. So this new like thing that they're doing, where it's like you have to watch some shit to be to, to not be confused. There's you don't know what's going on in this movie. Same as like Doctor Strange. If you didn't watch Wandavision, you don't know what the fuck is going on in Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness. You're just like, what? Yeah. Wanda's bad now. Like, Which, what the fuck? I mean, they were a lot better than that uh, in the first three phases, um, like with Agents of Shield, because uh, was it uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron? That was the only one where at the very beginning of the movie. They they're already assembled and they're fighting and you really don't know why unless you watch Agents of Shield but you don't really need to because it doesn't necessarily need to yeah be because you watch the first drive Avengers the movie and you're just like oh they're right. the Avengers now so clearly they're doing stuff right? right they're going after Hydra trying to like find the extra right. Hydra cells and all that stuff yeah so you don't really need that stuff and also I know you die on this hill but Agents of Shield was like not connected to the MCU the way that the Disney Plus shows are. The Disney Plus shows are like essential viewing if you want to enjoy the next thing that's coming. Oh, out. I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I was saying it's like yeah, yeah. Agents of Shield had its own story, but it did tie in right. to the movies as they were coming out. Yeah, but it mm -hmm. wasn't necessary. Where, like right. you're saying, like Loki is mm -hmm. almost necessary. Yeah. to have somewhat of an idea of what's going on. Yeah, terrible design choice or whatever. It, you it's call just it. yeah, it's a weird business decision. It's like why yeah. are you gonna you're you're, you're you're shackling, you're literally putting handcuffs on your fan base because, like, even... Well, this is a problem of having this many characters because even in comics, like, unless you're reading every comic book that Marvel puts out, you're not really going to be... Like, even when they, like, when they release Civil War or Age of Apocalypse, um, you couldn't read... And, and, I mean, you could buy every Captain America, every Spider-Man, every Iron Man, and all the Civil War comics... And know what's going on, but you could, you, I mean, well, you can't know what's going on unless you're reading them. So, but the way it goes, the way in comic books it works usually is like a reader is a fan of like a particular character, and that's the character mm -hmm. that they devote their time to. So, say I'm a right. Captain America fan, like I'm buying the Captain America books and I'm following that Captain America story. And sure, when other characters show up or the Avengers show up, well, there'll be pages say the that'll thing. say like, right. It'll say, "Go read this for more information about this." But you don't have to. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to. And exactly. then when they do their big yearly crossover event, it doesn't like you mm -hmm. don't have to know all the other stuff because you know, like, oh, fucking, here's the X Men. With this, it's like again, it's essential viewing. It's like if I didn't, if you didn't, straight up, if you didn't watch Loki. You're fucking confused. You don't know what's going on in this movie. You're like sacred timeline. Like what the fuck is like? It's like what is going on right now? And it's gonna. It seems like it's gonna continue to be that way. And it's like, sure, there were a couple of like exceptions. I like, like the greater Marvel universe. That's why I kind of enjoy. No, it. I do too. But but you're but you're making a product. Like, it. Not everybody could watch every single show and movie to be caught up. No. Agreed. And 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 then what are you supposed to do with somebody like Marvin, for instance, who hasn't watched everything? Hey, Marvin, you should really sit down and watch the MCU stuff. He's gonna sit down. It's like thirty three movies and like fifteen shows. Holy fuck! <laughs> we like, were what having the this conversation because my roommate has not watched them at all, and oh my, I God. was like, he was like, "What do I got to do to get caught up?" And yeah. so like I sat down and watched like just take the off of America's work for a year, just the Avengers, and I was like, "Well, okay, like for Phase One, it's like twenty four movies." Mm -hmm. But if you really wanted to just do it, you could probably do it in 12. And Dan thought that was a little bit egregious. He's like, make him watch them all. And I'm like, no, 
uh, you're you're like <laughs> counter arguing your point when you said make him watch them all because you think phase one is a banger and you should watch all those, which I agree. But for somebody that doesn't fucking care, you do have to cut some of that shit out. And that's why I like, well, like okay, tw 12, you can do it in 12, even though it's 24 movies. When I'm recommending, it's not based off of like um, continuity. It's based off of like enjoyability. So for phase one and right. two, like me, my personal opinion is those movies are fucking all bangers. Like, yeah, I think you, you make somebody watch them all just for their own sake because they're all great. Uh, but yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. That's really all I have to say about this movie. I'm very disappointed. I don't think it was a very strong introduction for Kang, who's supposed to be the next big bad Avengers level right. threat. I no. don't think it was a good trilogy movie. Right phase five intro don't think it was a good phase <laughs> intro uh i really there's not much that i liked about it and uh, i hope phase six intro is a lot better yeah i don't know get me <laughs> to the it's blade already. phase six intro is blade yeah we'll see and we already heard what, what's next in phase five guardians guardians i think will be a banger because mm. you know it's probably impossible that it won't be but it's like after Guardians, like where do we go now? Like what? You know what I mean? It's like it's all characters. Like Dusty said, like nobody really gives a fuck about, and they're trying desperately to make us give a fuck about them. They're like obviously like Cassie was the focal point of this movie because they're cl and and trying and, to build up the Young Avengers. And nobody cares about the Young Avengers. Matter of fact, Ed has told me he's like when they get to the Young <laughs> Avengers, I'm like done. I'm out completely <laughs> because nobody fucking cares, dude. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Thunderbolts and Young Avengers is where they're going. Like, yeah, I know. Can, it, it feels, and then this is a, like a total Disney move. Mm -hmm. They're drilling it down to kids for kids. But it's like it's such a so it seems it's such a stupid creative decision because I might like the Young Avengers if when they show me the shit. But like you're gonna follow up what you had started with, like you said, the heavy hitters with fucking Cassie Lang and She Hulk and fucking just. These nobody yeah. characters, like, why are you doing this to me? I feel like it should be a news flash for them, where they finally understand that parents are gonna take their kids, regardless of if it's a kids movie or not. Yeah, with to these Marvel movies, I feel yep. like. Mm -hmm. And it, I mean, as if long the kids as they are, keep rating them like they do, if kids are reading comic books, comic books aren't like toned down or anything, which right? they're like, really not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. It's weird. It really just feels like Marvel has gotten comfortable. Like, a little too comfortable. Like, they're they're coasting down the highway. They're on cruise control. Yeah. Like, we've... Right. And I hope I'm proven wrong, but we say this after everything we do now. Everything we watch. We're like, all right, this, like, was not that good. And we got the next one coming. We'll check it out then. It's like, okay, well, the next one hasn't been good. And it does, and, and honestly, yeah. like I've seen people talking, like defending this movie, and they're like, "Oh, Peyton Reed's like a fucking genius. This guy's a fucking hack at best. Like <laughs> he doesn't have any good fucking movies. A, a, like the breakup, may oh, okay, that's a, that's a funny comedy. And Yes Man, pretty funny movie. But like other than that, oh, and yeah, Ant Man, it's like guys fucking done nothing. Like what are we talking about? And and he then didn't bring it on. He did bring it on. Is yeah. Real? And then the Rick and Morty writer. Rick and Morty's like, I don't care what anybody says. Oh, you just don't get it. It's like, yeah, okay, dude. The show is just like I so just don't deep. Get it. I fucking well, there are many parallels between Rick and Morty in this movie. Yeah, it felt like watching many a Rick. If this felt like watching a cartoon, yeah. <laughs> that's why when I got home, I was like, oh, the humor is very similar. So I don't know. Didn't like it. Which I mean, you probably just pissed off a lot of people because don't give a fuck. There are Rick and Morty people who <laughs> I know. think it's. It is so fucking highbrow that some people don't even get it. Let me tell you something. I some don't. Some of those fans just don't get it. Ninety percent of the reason why I don't like Rick and Morty is because of that show's shitty fan base. <laughs> just say it right out. But uh, yeah, I don't know. If I had to rate this like we would normally do in a review, I, I would give this a six. That's being like super generous. Super six generous. For Marvel. That's generous. Ooh. And that's I'd give generous. It a six and a half. Yeah. Damn. But it's still watching. You no, know, Vince Vince went to see this and he he liked it. Did he? Yeah. He enjoyed right. it. Shout out to but Vince. he's a huge Jonathan Majors fan. So Dude, yeah. Jonathan Majors was it great. Probably in the movie. carried it a lot for him. He was. He, he was very good in this movie. And, and again, I'm excited for Kang. I didn't know Dan Dan den denigrated him a little bit, but I'm excited. It wasn't for Kang him. It wasn't one. him. It wasn't him. It was it was, it was the way the movie portrayed him he didn't right, right. like he didn't do what you would expect like when the villain the big villain shows up like he 
I don't know. It wasn't Majors. It wasn't him at all. He was great. He yeah. carried the movie, if anything. Right. Uh, but yeah. So that's that's my thoughts on Ant Man and the Wasp. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bad taste. 